highest James and a few months ago Apple released a new refreshed 13 inch MacBook Pro with its greatly improved keyboard and some hardware improvement. I've had this laptop for a little bit now and I'm going to be giving you my honest review of the 13 inch base MacBook Pro. So the 13 inch lineup comes with essentially two different options. You've got a lower end model which comes in at $12.99 and you've got the higher end model which comes in at $17.99. As usual with Apple products or any product for that matter, you have the ability to upgrade these models with different options. So the base 13 inch model comes with an 8th generation i5. This is the same as last year's 2019 MacBook Pro. Just for reference, the higher end model, the 1799 one, comes with a 10th generation i5. However, this review isn't about the higher end model, it's about the base model. So back to the base model. So as well as the 8th generation i5, it also comes with 8GB of LPDDR3 memory. These specs are slightly disappointing as they were used in last year's MacBook. But as well as that, it only comes with two Thunderbolt ports, compared to the higher end model which comes with four Thunderbolt ports. Only having two Thunderbolt ports isn't much of a problem as you can easily buy adapters for a cheap price on Amazon that will essentially extend these ports and at the end of the day unless you're plugging in loads of external monitors then you're not going to really need the extra two ports. But it would have been nice to see the base model having four ports as at the end of the day having a few extra ports can be quite useful sometimes. When purchasing the laptop, the slower memory and processor were the things that made me really nervous as I thought it wouldn't be able to handle the things that I wanted to do on it. However, I was greatly wrong as you'll see later on in this video. As standard, the base model comes with 256GB of SSD storage which is a lot better than last year's models and previous MacBooks as the base model only came with 128GB of SSD storage. So now moving on to the physical design and build of the laptop. We all know how Apple make the best quality products. Well, I certainly didn't disappoint on this MacBook. The build quality feels incredible and every time when I just pick it up, it just fills me with joy because it just feels incredible to hold. It just overall has a really like premium feel to it, as I'm sure you'd agree if you've used one in the past. Due to its size, it's really portable as well as being considerably light. It weighs around 1.4 kilograms, which is really good for commuters and students who need to be carrying this laptop around every day. It can easily fit into your bag and it doesn't take up much room. And overall, it just feels really light when you're carrying it around in a backpack or just generally in your hands around the house. Moving to the keyboard, I'm sure that you've heard about Apple's butterfly keyboard, the one that broke, uh, didn't feel good, and just generally, yeah, just didn't work that well. However, Apple have really outdone themselves with this new keyboard that they've been putting onto their new MacBooks. It's honestly amazing. I can't express how much I love it. It is honestly the best typing experience I've ever experienced with a keyboard. It also sounds incredible to type on. Here's a quick listen of what it sounds like. Good, right? Well, there's just one thing that I don't really like when typing on this keyboard. When typing for a long time, your wrist can start to dig into the sides of the MacBook. This is not really much of a big problem as you can easily buy just nice wrist rests on Amazon for £5 or just take a break for one or two minutes once it starts to hurt. But generally it only starts to hurt if you've been typing for hours and hours. But yeah, that's my only downside of this keyboard. It's not really the keyboard problem, it's more of just the design of the MacBook. But don't let this put you off because it, it's not really that bad, it's just something I thought I should mention. We can't talk about the keyboard without talking about the touch bar. So I'm sure that most of you have heard of the touch bar, either as something that increases your productivity or as a gimmick that doesn't really help you at all. I've made another video on whether the touch bar is really that productive. You can find it by clicking up here or you can click on the link in the description. But the touch bar is more of just a personal preference in whether you like it. Personally, I love it. I use it every day. However, I've got friends who just really don't like it at all. 
So I just say the best way for you to find out in whether you like it is just to try it out for a while. So either go to like a local Apple store or just borrow a laptop of a friend who has a touch bar. But at the end of the day, the MacBooks come with a touch bar. There's no option to remove them. So yeah. But one really good thing about the new refresh is that there's now a physical escape key. In the older models, the escape key was built into the touch bar. This would mean that when the touch bar occasionally froze, the escape key would be unusable. But now as there's a physical escape key, there's no chance of it freezing, so it's a lot, lot better. But another really good thing about this laptop is the trackpad. It is the best trackpad you can currently get on the market. These trackpads come with every single laptop that Apple makes, and I can confirm it's 100 times better than any Windows trackpad that I've used. So you definitely won't be disappointed in this aspect. So moving to the speakers, they sound really good, especially considering the size of the laptop. It's absolutely perfect if you're just wa wanting to watch a Netflix video, YouTube video, listening to music. It sounds absolutely incredible, as in I couldn't fault it in any way. But let me show you what it's like. So as you just heard from that, it sounds really good. But the one not so good thing about this laptop is the camera. It's only 720p, which I wouldn't really say is acceptable for 2020, considering that most some other laptops have a 4K camera in the front facing one. But these 13 inch MacBooks and the 16 inch as well only have a 720p camera. I mean, this is okay if you're just looking to do Zoom calling and FaceTiming calling. However, don't expect to record any high quality YouTube videos on it. So the screen, it has a 2560 by 1600 resolution and 500 nits of brightness. This results in great picture quality as well as the ability to work outside in bright conditions. So if you know that you're going to be doing a lot of work outside in the sunshine or just generally outside, then you definitely want to consider the MacBook Pro lineup because they have the ability to go much brighter than other laptops, so for example like the MacBook Air. But as well as this, it has an amazing colour gamut. This means that for example you're able to see like deeper reds. Well essentially what it means is that it just shows more colour. So if you're going to be doing a lot of pro work like photo editing or video editing, then you definitely want to consider these MacBook lineups. All of the models within the MacBook Pro lineup will be able to show this colour gamut. So definitely consider the MacBook Pros over the MacBook Airs if you're going to be doing intense work, intense pro work like photo and video editing. In terms of the battery, the base model of the MacBook Pro will get around 9 hours if you're just doing daily tasks like browsing the web and using the Mail app. However, if you're going to be doing more power driven work like video editing, then the MacBook, the base MacBook Pro will get around 7 to 8 hours of battery life which is really good, especially considering the size of this laptop. So now onto the bit that I'm sure you're most looking forward to, how the base model laptop actually performs. So as I said at the beginning of the video, the base model comes with an 8th generation i5 and 8GB of LPDDR3 memory. From just looking at the specs on its own, it doesn't really seem that impressive, but you'd be greatly surprised about how much power this base model laptop can actually give. So how does this base model handle daily tasks like web browsing and emailing? Well, it handles it without a breeze. It is completely quick, very snappy, and you've got nothing to worry about in terms of that case. I know what you're thinking. All the laptops on the market are able to do daily tasks. Why wouldn't this laptop be able to? Well, the reason I brought up about whether it can handle daily tasks or not is because of the MacBook Air that got released earlier this year. So there have been tests carried out on this MacBook Air where it's actually overheated when trying to watch a YouTube video on Chrome. That is the main reason why I just brought that point up about whether this base MacBook Pro is able to do daily tasks. But now on to whether this MacBook Pro can actually do pro tasks like video editing and photo editing. You might assume, like I did, that because it has a 8th generation processor and that it only has 8GB of slow memory, that this base model wouldn't actually be able to handle tasks like 4K video editing and intense photo editing. Well, I was greatly wrong in assuming that, 
Just because it's got an 8th generation processor and slow memory, doesn't mean at all that it isn't able to handle any of these tasks. I've done some testing on this base MacBook Pro. I put three layers of 4K footage in Final Cut Pro on this base model, and it didn't drop a frame at all. I also tested out some photo editing and didn't experience any problems when testing that out. However, one thing I should mention is that when rendering the video in Final Cut Pro, the render time took a bit longer than a computer with a dedicated graphics card. That's just mainly because this base model, 13 inch, or any of the 13 inch models don't have a dedicated graphics card. And that is just the main reason in why the rendering time took a bit longer. But if you don't mind the rendering time to be a bit longer, then this MacBook Pro will be able to do your video editing fine. Out of my whole time in using and testing this Mac base MacBook Pro, I only experienced one problem. This was to do with the 8GB of memory. I was building a programming project as well as running a few background tasks and the computer started to heat up quite a lot and slow down quite a lot as well. But if you're, but that was just because of me trying to run quite a lot of tasks at one time. But if you're just looking at getting a laptop for daily use plus the occasional pro work like once or twice a week, then this base MacBook Pro is absolutely perfect for you. So in conclusion of this review, am I going to recommend the base model of the 13 inch MacBook Pro? Well, my answer is yes, 100%. If you're looking at using this for daily use plus the occasional pro work like two or three times a week, then this MacBook Pro will be able to handle everything you want. It is portable, light, so you can travel with it really easily. However, if you're a pro user who uses Pro Tools every day, I'd recommend going for a 16 inch model. Mainly because it has a dedicated graphics card and at the end of the day it does have a better processor and can have more memory. However, if you're looking for portability as well as power, I'd recommend going for the higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro, the 1799 one, as this at the end of the day as well has a 10th generation i5 as well as faster 16 gigabytes of memory. But as I said, if you're going to be doing this every day, then you might as well take the investment and spend the extra bit of money to get the higher end 13 inch. But generally, with this base model, you're not going to be disappointed. It will be able to handle most things that you throw at it. If you do decide to go ahead and buy a MacBook Pro, let me know by tagging me on Instagram, and I will 100% guarantee that you'll not be disappointed with your purchase. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you. If you enjoyed the video, please do consider giving it a like, and while you're down there, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.